today is the day. So, I finally got my cap kits from Klondike Mike. Um, it took a, I guess I had to clear through customs or something, so it took an extra week or whatever. Um, yeah, it's coming from Canada, so it's has to go through customs. Um, Alright, so I gotta take down this President Grant and recap it. So, yeah, I wouldn't do this on a radio that wasn't worth keeping. <laughs> you know? Like I said, because it takes hours. It's gonna take, probably take me a couple of hours to do this. Um, so I gotta pull the radio out of my stand here. Um, if you're wondering what these stands I make, all this stuff, it's on my Thingiverse page. Link down below. If you have a 3D printer, you can print this stuff out. But yeah, the, the, the cap kit from Call Mike, Mike um, yeah, he uses all good components. So I verified it in my last video. Uh, these are all American-made, and either Japanese or American-made capacitors. So, like I said, it's not worth putting the time in, in these radios. I mean, if it's, if you're gonna put cheap caps in it, it's not worth spending hours to recap it. You know. Um, so the, right now, there's currently Japanese capacitors or Tosin caps in this radio. So I'm gonna take it out and we'll open it up. All right. So here's a closer look at the radio. So if you're not familiar with these radios, they run the uh, 858 chassis, and I guess they're highly desirable. So. Um, yeah, I know they only made these for a couple of years, uh, because I, from what I was reading, that the FCC banned them, uh, this PLL chip here, because it was too hackable, um, you know, to do, like, out-of-band channel mods. So, alright, so I gotta go through here. I replaced the speaker in one of my last videos. Um, so one of the, like, yeah, it's, here's a dead giveaway. Typically, a lot of these 858 chassis, the mobile ones, you'll see the speaker, the Made in Japan ones, the speaker is actually mounted on the actual chassis, not the actual cover. So it seems like all the other radios after this seem like they were mounted on the cover. Which makes it a headache taking it apart, you know, because you have to deal with the hanging wire. Um, also another get dead giveaway too is that this thing actually uses a relay. So see that relay right there? Yeah, that's another dead giveaway. Um, yeah, I think they went to like a, but probably either some kind of transistor or MOSFET after that, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's a transmit relay. Alright, so... I'm going to take this speaker off. Um, I'm going I'm to desolder the speaker because I don't have to deal with the hanging wires. So, the factory caps are, are Japanese, uh, Tosin brand. But I noticed that when I was looking around the first time, I noticed that some of these caps I think had been replaced at some point. Not all of them, but some, I, some of the ones over here weren't Tosin. Um, yeah, then I couldn't find original speakers here, so I designed this yeah, the little... Um, adapter plate, this plastic adapter plate that, uh, that all this stuff's on my thing over this page if you want it. Um, but adapts like a round speaker to like a square speaker. Um, all right, this is going to be, it's going to be kind of a headache, but all right, we'll get it done. So another guy, because in my, one of my other videos, I, I, I mentioned this, uh, this one was just sitting here, this unused, uh, it looks like a transform, but he said it was a filter. So I'm not sure. So if you guys are familiar with these 858 chassis, let me know. I thought he said it was a power, like, you know, to clean up the power coming to the radio. Because it is kind of in a spot <clears throat> that would be sort of near this power connector, but... Or with the speaker, did the speaker run through it? Or the main... I think it sounded like he meant the main power went through it. Yeah, some sort of, like, cleanup filter, you know? Um, don't know. But if you know, let me know. Alright, so if you're not familiar with these chassis, um, it runs the PC-176 uh, AD. Uh, and they use that same motherboard in quite a few higher-end radios, like the Cobra 139XL, XLR, I think the 130XLR, the mobile version of the 139. So the 139 was a base station radio, but I guess they also use this in like the President Washington uh, base station. Um, so it's a really nice motherboard. I mean, if they're using their flagship base stations, and you know it's probably a good, good board. All right, so I think uh, I'm going to start in this corner and go that way. Maybe down, get the bigger ones first. But what I'm going to do is, um, I'm not going to cut the leads on them, just because that way I know which ones I've replaced and not replaced. Even though I should kind of know just by the color and the brand, but um, just to, as a double, as a, as a safe measure, I'm just going to leave the leads on. Um, what else do I have to do on this thing? I didn't really see any, like, I didn't see any mods in this radio, but I guess I didn't look that closely. Because there was so many mods you could do this radio. Um, I, as far as I can tell, it hasn't been hacked up, but... Um, yeah, I don't know enough about radios to know what's been done or not done, so... 
Let me show you the tools I'm using. So I'm going to use my also my hackle solder iron, like a solder suckering um, solder iron. If that doesn't work, then I got this. Uh, but I'm hoping because it's an older radio, they use like low melt solder, like that new stuff that comes in the factory. Man, it's it's hard to get this stuff off. It's super high heat, you know. Um, yeah, which makes it ever headache. If you have to put like low melt solder on it first to remove it. Yeah, 55 capacitors. Well, I think a little bit less because I don't have the AC adapter um, or the you know, the uh, tra AC transformer. Because since they use this, this motherboard mainly in base radios, they basically have their own internal power supply. Which because I don't see like any of this this thick filter cap right here. I think that was for like the internal power supply. Yeah, this is actually going to take a long time. So that's the first cap. So I well, I started with this one because it, this doesn't seem like the factory cap. Um, like I said, all their caps are Tosin brand. So what is this? Um, 16 volt. I know that they had some issues like with 10 volt caps. They were using 10 volt caps in these things. Um, so that's a thousand UF. Hopefully there's one in the kit. Like I said, hopefully they didn't mod this radio too much where I can't, um, you know, figure out like what the, there's an unknown value, you know. Um, but since that's not the factory cap, I don't know if the guy put what's... Actually, I can't find the schematic for this radio. So uh, so I guess unknown caps I will not put in there. And then try to find a schematic, maybe. Alright, so here is the uh, replacement cap. So I think they're either all 25 volt or higher. So this is 35 volt. I'm not going to do this for every single cap, but just so you can see a difference, a comparison. Alright, so I'm going to leave the leads on. That way I know that I've replaced this cap. Um, so I'm just going to go down the line and it's going to take me a while, so, so what I was saying is I'm testing all these caps before I put them in there. Okay, 473, that's close. It's supposed to be 470. Alright. Alright, so here's an example of a 10 volt cap that I've been reading about. So, I'm going to replace that with the 25 volt right here. Alright, this is going to take a long time. So my first part of this video I had some guy that thought I was trying to fake everybody out with a fake radio or some kind of like copy of a bootleg radio, I'm not sure. Um, so this is, if you're watching this video, the guy that commented, this thing is definitely from the 70s. There's no doubt this thing is real. I mean, look at the corrosion on this thing. You can't fake this stuff. The dirt on it, I mean, this thing is from the 70s. There's no way this thing is a fake. 100% real. All right, so I'm a couple hours in. This is definitely a commitment. So I'm guessing this is going to take me the whole day. So, yeah, I mean, once you start, you probably shouldn't stop because that way you don't lose where you're at. But, uh, I mean, if you're going to do this, it's, I mean, expect to take most of the day doing it. Kind of annoying. I got one under the shield. I got to take the shield off. I just have one under there. All right, it's getting kind of dark in here, but this is the only capacitor I've seen that looks like it's sort of had some leakage, maybe. Or flux, or I'm not sure. So I'm going to grab some alcohol clean that up real fast. Alright, so this 470 cap that looked like it was leaking, just for my own reference here, if I have to go back, this is going here, but I don't see a 47 in my kit, or excuse me, 470 microfarad. So maybe, it's, all, it's also not a factory cap, so, I mean, it's not, is it the wrong cap? I mean, this, this area had been worked on, because the caps weren't factory in this area here. Um, so, I need to... Look at the schematic. I did find a schematic for the 139 XLR, so I'm going to see if I can figure out what the factory is supposed to be there, you know. So I need to look and figure out what this thing is connected to. So, I'm turning it around. Where's the other side go? Okay, so it looks like it's the it's the main power rail. It's feeding this. I think, what's this called? The like power amp? I forget the name of this, this chipper here. So what's funny is my local Marvax actually sells these things, which is crazy. They got the really like old school, like old, uh, what's it called, old stock or new, new old stock. A bunch of new old stock stuff. Place has been there forever though. Um, Alright, so I gotta figure out what this is, what this capacitor is supposed to be. It's just on the first pin, or first or last pin of this thing. No, this is a president radio. Uh, the schematic says a thousand microfarad. I took a 470 out of um, C94 right there. So I'm going to keep that out. I'm going to do a little bit more research on that one. 
yeah, like I said, the Cobra XLR is a thousand. So, all right, man, this is this took hours. I mean, six hours maybe. I'm not sure. Um, I'm exhausted and actually, back hurts. So I don't know how much they charge at a radio shop to do this, but this this is takes a long time, man. No joke. I mean, to do it and I mean, I hope this thing doesn't pop. Like I think the only way this would pop is if um, you know, I got the uh, the polarity wrong, but I did the best I could to look, but like once you get tired, man, it's just, it's kind of gnarly. So um, I'm gonna cut all cut all things off, but yeah, a couple of the spots. Like I said, I looked at the schematic. I got the thousand puff right here, or thousand microfarad. Um, and then this also one here, the guy had a, a hundred microfarad in here. Whereas I was like, I was short a capacitor. I'm like, where's my 100 UF capacitor? So I thought he had forgot a capacitor, but then I looked at the schematic. Well, I looked at the areas where I know it was custom done, you know? So there was a hundred here and there should have been a 33. So 33 and 33. So, um, yeah, I'm just double checking and make sure I didn't forget any. Because I do actually have some leftovers, but like I said in the beginning of this video, I said that this, the original Cobra 139 XLR had an AC adapter in it. So, or power supply. So, I'm assuming this is the filter capacitor for the power supply. So, I'm guessing the rest of these were probably in that power supply. Or extras, I'm not sure, but I don't see it. The cool thing about his dock is on his card, it gives you a dock that says where the capacitors go, the actual capacitor numbers. So that was helpful, and also the schematic, so I can verify. All right, a little nervous. Power this thing on. Sorry, I got cut the cut all the strips off too. Speaker wires. All right, I hope it doesn't pop. But it, if it does pop, I hope to get it on camera. Okay, there's our solder joint. I gotta. Solder down here. When I was actually trying to find the, the leads, you know, sometimes I would actually take off, you know, uh, joints that weren't actually uh, um, joints that weren't actually the capacitors. Freaking headache, man. All right, so this thing pops. You're gonna see it. Um, yeah, I, I double checked everything, but I mean, actually earlier when I was doing, it, I, I realized I actually had one reversed. Just because I double checked it a couple times, so. I don't know. Here we go. Power supply on. Put my glasses on. <laughs> well, I don't have a speaker connected to it. Looking for a smoke. Got some light. I'll see if it'll train. Well, I don't have antenna hooked up, but all right. Well, I didn't see any smoke, so that's the most important thing. Double check, you know, around here, everywhere. All right, so that's how I recapped it. So, yeah, pretty cool kits. I got. I'll link, put a link down below. Klondike Mike he sells them on eBay, and uh, he actually sells them on Amazon, eBay, I think. And uh, I, I actually bought it from his website directly. Just because I wasn't sure, um, because this motherboard he didn't have listed on his website, the 176 AD. So the, the kit was for 176 AA. So, um, but even I couldn't find a schematic for the 176 AD. So, um, yeah, like I said, you, you got to remember this is this is way before the internet. I mean, obviously it's like 30 years before or 20 years before the internet. So, um, yeah, just getting these things, even just the copies you did get, do get are like copies of like Xerox copies of like some old or scanned copy of an old document. So, um, all right, guys, I'm stoked. So, one step further, let's get this thing into my uh, thing. So, I think next weekend, I mean, this, I, I didn't realize, I just took forever. So, um, I think I'm going to do that probably in a week or so. I want to get this one dialed in. So, I at least have one working radio. Um, so, yeah, just, if you're going to do this, make sure you're, you don't have any distractions because there's so many caps and getting the polarity correct. You just got to pay attention to this stuff, man. So, like I said, I actually had one reversed 
um, somewhere in here, one of the I think it's actually the, the the 33. I actually had that reverse, and uh, I just happened to go back and look at it again, and it was uh, actually reverse polarity. So I would have popped if I would have put the power on right now. So all right, this is a cool radio. The uh, 858 chassis lives. All right, cool.